This is NTA Nationwide. Good afternoon. My name is Femi Johnson. Thanks for joining us. President Muhammadu Buhari has expressed Nigeria's deep appreciation over his relationship with the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, describing it as mutually beneficial. The president stated this while receiving the outgoing ambassador of the Royal Embassy of Saudi Arabia on a farewell visit. State House correspondent Adam Musambo has details. President Muhammad Buhari, who described the relationship between Nigeria and Saudi Arabia as strong, said apart from visiting Mecca and Medina for spiritual upliftment, a lot of Nigerians also patronize Saudi Arabian universities. The mutually beneficial relationship, he said, will grow stronger in years to come as the two countries are already collaborating in other areas of common interest. The president expressed delight that the Nigerian economy is gradually reviving as a result of the various policy initiatives, including the Agricultural Revolution Program, describing the last farming season as quite good. The outgoing Saudi Arabian ambassador, Fahad bin Abdullah Safian, who spent 20 months on tour of duty in Nigeria, commended President Muhammadu Buhari for the bold steps taken in confronting the Boko Haram insurgency which he described as part of Nigeria's fundamental problems. Reflecting on President Buhari's successful visit to Saudi Kingdom on the invitation of King Salman in February last year, the envoy said such exchange of visits by the leaders should be sustained in the interests of both countries. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Coalition of Islamic Countries Against Terrorism is to emulate strategies adopted by Nigerian military in fighting insurgency. The Acting Secretary General of the Coalition, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Al Saleh, said this while inaugurating the 108 FM Lafayette Dole radio station in Giwambara, Maiduguri, Bruno State. Defense correspondent is. raised by stakeholders at a Monday meeting on post-conflict reconciliation jointly organized by the Center for Democracy and the United Nations Development Program. Hosseini Mohammed Issa reports. Not East has been beset by sustained acts of by Boko Haram terrorists in which the heinous activities have led to death of innocent lives and displacement of over 2.5 million people as revealed by available data. This brought about the urgent need for strategizing and streamlining efforts to get to the root causes of the crisis with a view to averting future occurrence. It was on this premise that the Center for Democracy and Development in conjunction with the United Nations Development Program organized a one-day meeting between communities and security agencies in order to brainstorm on how to develop trust building among the two partners. Speaking at the event, project manager specialist in the UNDP, Yoshiaki Nogushi, and state director of CDD, Idayat Hassan both advise for synergy between members of the public and security agencies. Infrastructures such as uh, yeah, health clinics or schools have been reconstructed under the project. And starting a conversation is not always to start it on a top down basis. It is not just for the government to say this is how we want to do it, it is to have to build bridges. And that is one very positive thing we are seeing in the three states. 
Center for Democracy and Development is a non-governmental organization trying to provide an independent space to reflect critically on the challenges posed to democratization and development process in the Northeast, among other post-insurgency issues. Let's take back our stories on Coalition for Islamic Countries Against Terrorism, what to emulate strategies adopted by Nigeria military in fighting insurgency. This was what the Acting Secretary General of the Coalition, Lieutenant General Abdullah Labina Saleh, said while inaugurating the 108 FM Lafayette Dole radio station in Giwa Barracks, Medugore. Bruno State Defense Correspondent Ismail Musa is now ready with our report. And this is the defense showed that radio, a means of mass communication invented in 1895, has been incorporated as a vital tool for war propaganda globally. With the insurgency in the Northeast that began in 2009 partly attributed to radical extremism, the Theta Command Operation Lafia Doli in Medugri Borno State established the radio station to reorient the people of the area through counter extreme ideology. The 108 FM Lafia Doli radio station, a critical component of ideological warfare of the ongoing war against insurgency in the Northeast has been on test transmission since February 2014. This radio station is but an indication of how wise this country and this armed forces is addressing the problem of extremism and terrorism. The radio station broadcasting in English, Hausa and Kanuri covers 25 kilometer radius. Our mission in the international, in the Islamic military, coalition of fighting terrorism is to study and see what support we can give to our colleagues on the Federal Republic of Nigeria in fighting terrorism and the uh, lessons we can learn from the experiences that the Nigerians have gone through. From Medugri, Borno State, Ismail Musa, NTA News. The Senate has passed the report of the Committee on the Independent National Electoral Commission. While considering clause-by-clause clause provisions of the report in a committee of the whole, the plenary authenticate the use of any other technology device by Independent National Electoral Commission that will help curtail rigging. Eventualities like death of candidates and also during elections were also considered and also passed details in subsequent bulletin. A good governance. Representatives has resolved to invite the Minister of Budget, Planning and Finance to brief members on measures to address the plight of Nigerian pensioners. This came in a motion moved by the representative Hassan Shekaru. Ignatius Unko is standing by to tell us more. Well, yesterday the speaker met with the Nigerian Union of Pensioners in his office where he assured them that the House would meet with relevant authorities to ensure that their plight is being addressed. And that is why the Chairman House Committee on Pension, Representative Hassan Shekarao, brought this motion on the floor today. He's here to tell us actually what the House expects from this meeting with the ministers. Thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you very much, Ignatius. Uh, as you rightly said it all, uh, the motion comes as a result of the meeting with the Speaker and Nigeria Union you know, of Pensioners. Uh, from the discussions, it becomes obvious that to tackle this, the challenge of Nigerian pensioners, the need for, to invite the two ministers of finance and budget and planning is that paramount. This is the only way that uh, we can uh, have a correct information. And then as I put it in the motion, that it will, it's no longer a blame game. Uh, the essence is that for the collaboration between the executive and the legislator to find a lasting solution on the problem. And uh, we ho do hope that uh, their coming will provide a solution for that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Far-reaching measures have been taken by the Federal Executive Council towards ensuring that relationship between the legislature remains cordial for sustainable growth and development of the country. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, while briefing newsmen after the Council's meeting said, a high power committee has been constituted towards addressing areas of concern. State House correspondent Adamo Sambo has more. 
with President Muhammadu Buhari presiding the Executive Council analyzed the existing relationship with the legislature, concluding that it can be made more healthier for good governance and effective service delivery. In any democracy, there is a continuous struggle to balancing between the executive and the legislative because each of them are creations of the law. And um, we must strive at all times to ensure that there's that balance and there's that amity and there's that uh, uh, smooth relationship. And this matter was discussed. And the committee already is working on ensuring that you know, we uh, resolve all these uh, outstanding issues. In the meantime, the council approved the ratification of the agreement for the establishment of West African Tax Administration Forum as a platform for the promotion of mutual agreement and cooperation among the sub-regional tax authorities. And the effects of it will be that there will be better information sharing and cooperation between uh, countries within West Africa on tax administration. Um, this is really part of our tax reform efforts. Um, as you know, many of, of uh, Nigerians, for example, own properties in Ghana and other neighboring countries. Now, for tax purposes, will be able to have access uh, to that type of information. She said approval has also been given for the issuance of a circular to ministries, departments, and agencies towards ensuring that only documents from companies that have complied with the law are treated. And equally, the accountant general is being advised that payments will only be affected to companies that are fully compliant with the law. Again, this is just to make sure that all those who are doing business with government, making money from government, are paying the right taxes. On his part, the Minister of Interior has been given the go-ahead to procure 15 water trucks at 403 million naira for the Federal Fire Service. It was agreed during the discussion that that number is quite small. And uh, there is this uh, issue of uh, the law which says that every public building must be insured uh, in terms of fire. Myself and the Minister of Finance will put us heads together to look at how best we can explore that situation so that from that kind of taxes we will be able to fund the fire service adequately. The ministry is also under instruction to fashion out a much better strategy for firefighting in line with international best practice. The most important thing is that we should have a common standard uh, so that uh, in terms of uh, our capacity to handle fire incidents, in terms of preventive measures, uh, in terms of our conduct and attitude uh, in delivering services, those standards should be able to guide us. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, also used the opportunity to react to the protest march by the labor unions in his ministry over welfare issues. As much as it affects them, it affects us also. So we just continue to plead with them to be patient. The economy is simply not healthy enough to accommodate what used to be accommodated in the past. That is the honest truth. If and when the economy improves, we technically look at some of the grievances that are genuine and that we can cope with. The Federal Executive Council also discussed the issue of prison congestion, directing the Ministers of Justice and Interior to come up with a comprehensive plan of action towards ensuring that they are not only decongested, but made to serve as effective reformation centers. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. The recent gains of the Naira over the dollar has been attributed to the intervention of the central bank in pushing dollars into the forex market. While analyzing the development, financial and economic experts of Good Morning Nigeria described it as a welcome idea that needs to be sustained. Abdul Malik Adio has more. In continuation of efforts to increase the availability of foreign exchange to ease the difficulties encountered by Nigerians in obtaining funds for foreign exchange transactions, guests on the program say providing direct additional funding to banks is a right step in the right direction. What the results you see is comes from months of study and monitoring. And our aim is to ensure that we make the rates gravitate and to meet downwards and to meet the interbank market rate. See, I'm happy that at least uh, recent, of recent, the CBN is uh, has come up with a resolve 
to deal with this rascality. And uh, thank God, the environment, the circumstances are quite good enough for central bank to take those actions, at least in the short term. Even as the Central Bank of Nigeria has been commended for its intervention at the foreign exchange market, the need to eliminate the multiple rate in the market continues to generate concern. The challenge is that you then look at how can we do it in the short and in the medium and in the long term. But we need to again begin to look at how do we get more sources of FX in, how do we ensure that those demands are, are tamed down, and then we can ensure that our policies are consistent and they are transparent and everybody can know what exactly we are running as a policy. A backwards integration situation where our demand for Forex will continue to go down because we are getting more and more local components of uh, raw material for our manufacturing. There must always be principle of Pareto equality. If you are giving the banks such volumes, also consider the BDCs to give them volume. With the interbank rate at about 360 naira and the parallel market at 362 naira to a US dollar, the discussants noted that the move will cross speculators in the market and ensure that genuine foreign exchange seekers have access to foreign currency with ease. In Abuja, Abdumalik Adio, NT News. Foreign direct investment, trade balance in favor of Nigeria, and the safety and security of all Nigerians anywhere in the world are some of the key components of Nigeria's foreign policy thoughts before the second batch of non carry ambassadors designate as they are inducted in Abuja. Let's join Gabriel Odu for details. The induction course is structured to fully engage the ambassadors designate on their roles, duties, and responsibilities. For us, at Ministry of Foreign Affairs, we are confident that the future of Nigerian diplomacy and foreign policy is safe and secure in your hands. Chairman House Committee on Foreign Affairs, Nena Elendo Okeje, told the inductees to press up for serious diplomatic engagements. Again, it is often said that a diplomat is that person who can juggle a hot potato long enough for it to become a cold issue. That said, I wish you all happy juggling. Minister of Foreign Affairs Jeffrey Oyema is convinced that the ambassadors designate will do well in their various assignments. As ambassadors, you, you, you of course carry with you the mandate uh, of Mr. President. You'll be his uh, eyes and his ears in the various countries uh, in which you will be serving. And um, this is in addition to engaging fruitfully with uh, foreign governments and envoys. The induction course is to last five days. Lagos Network Centre is our first port of call on Nationwide, and it's over to Jennifer for stories around that end. Hey, Femi. Good evening and welcome to Lagos. The Lagos State Government has commissioned the Aboru Abesson Link Bridge and some adjoining roads in a Limosho local government area of the state. Nosal Sula reports that the state government also commissioned a health care facility in the area as part of activities to mark the 65th birthday of the former Lagos State Governor, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. The bridge, which was constructed on the initiative and approval of the governor, will serve as a link road for at least eight communities, including the neighboring Ogun states. Governor Ambode said he was happy as the event was a fulfillment of the promise he made to them a year ago. As we approach the mid-term of our our government is determined to increase the momentum and ensure that every part of the space feels a sense of belonging. Senator Bola Tunubu commended Governor Akilmi Ambode for the projects, describing him as a thinker and a doer, while expressing satisfaction that he was delivering on the promises to the people. We are giving me a good man being present. Opportunity to address our people. Opportunity to observe progress. I'm going for sure And the people of Lagos and the guests in Nigeria that are being remain the bastion of political tendency and politics in Nigeria. Senator Bola Tunubu 
also commissioned some newly constructed additional adjoining inner roads, which, according to him, would create an efficient road network to aid connectivity in Lagos, Nusa, Osula, NTA News. A robust and comprehensive power regulatory system to ensure regular power supply in the country has been advocated. This will allow governments to formalize and institutionalize its commitment to protect consumers and investors while maintaining a safe, reliable, and stable power supply. These were the submission of speakers at the 2017 public lecture organized by the Nigerian Academy of Engineering in Lagos. Kenneth Beluge has details. An issue that is of great concern to Nigerians is the state of necessity supply in the country. Manufacturers and other businesses have consistently, especially with the discos. The discos management will have to wake up and monitor their system. The Nigerian Academy of Engineering was established to promote engineering training and technological growth and economic development of Nigeria in Lagos, Ken Igbeluge, NTA News. Now to preserving history. A book that explores the many landscapes, treasure, and the cultural diversity that characterizes Nigeria has been presented to the cultural and tourism stakeholders. Jane Ojuku reports that Nigeria's 2.0, a pictorial publication by a renowned photographer, Dayo Adedayo, was presented at the just concluded Badagri Economic Summit in Lagos. Nigeria 2.0 is a visual journey through the vast and spectacular landscapes of Nigeria's 356,669 square miles. The book, which the author described as Nigeria's history in pictures, also showcases unique cultures and festivals, as well as monuments across the country. The renowned photographer Dayo Adedayo explains that the book, which took him over 11 years to compile, will help in telling the Nigerian story, especially to the youth and visitors to Nigeria. The largest monument in Africa is in Nigeria. It's from the hands of these unidentified criminals. We are perturbed, we are disturbed, because these ceaseless and unprovoked killings of our people by this unidentified government who are invading and occupying our ancestral homes and are grazing our farms and graves. It has become a source not only of concern, but it's an alarming situation. They, however, advised members of the legislature to come up with other alternatives. The problem is complicated in a way, just like I uh, mentioned. Before you, you know, there's an uh, attack in Agatu, and there will be attack at Jaikibia. There's an attack at somewhere in front of local governments. The group commended Benue state governments for actions taken to curb the crisis. And those are the stories that these are from Lagos. Back to Femi in Abuja for more on Nationwide News. Thank you. Joint Admissions and Matriculations Board have reduced the duration for UTME exams from three hours to two hours, as well as the number of questions from 400 to 180 in line with international best practices. Registrar of the Board, Professor Shaolan Rewaju, stated these at a strategic planning retreat on the structure of supervision and evaluation of the 2017 UTME in Kaduna. Eugenia Kweze reports. The registrar noted that the examination has now been simplified in such a way to accommodate those with disabilities, low computer literacy, among other challenges, to ensure level playing ground for all the candidates. We have brought together all those. FAD has developed a strategy towards improving the quality of rice produced in the country. Towards this end, farmers and extension services providers from six producing states are undergoing training on rice cultivation using irrigation system of farming. Musa Babali reports. The federal government planned to end the importation of rice by the end of this year for the country to become one of the major exporters of the produce in the next two to three years. 
This is to be achieved through the production and supply of high-quality seeds and inputs, as well as adoption of best agricultural practices in cultivation and processing, especially milling. The Minister of Agriculture, Adu Ogwe, says the government is supplying 200 rice milling machines to support the initiative. We'll develop the market through publicity, but also cut down on excessive importation. It doesn't sound very popular with some people. We just have to produce, eat what we know. IFAD is introducing new and simple farming techniques to rice farmers in six rice producing states as part of efforts to support the government to achieve its plans. Niger State is one of the states that is benefiting from the IFAD project, and farmers in other five states took a tour of rice farms in the state to learn the technology. They are beginning to, in the whole year, produce three times a year. Look at the rice here. This is not plastic rice. This is natural rice, compared to what is coming out from other sources. Rice cultivation with irrigation system, milling and storage are the focus. Niger that has this great potential, which is far more than most states, should take uh, uh, cognizance of that and use the opportunity to engage their youth and improve the production of rice, because the demand is there. We are assuring the farmers, produce as much as you can. There will be off-takers to buy off all the rice. Niger State is among the largest rice producing states in Nigeria, producing over 150 million metric tons annually. Musa Baba Ali, NTA News. Work on a number of road projects in the southwest geopolitical zone is steadily progressing after three years of abandonment. Works and housing correspondent Mohamed Hamza Sheikh reports that the southwest have 34 federal road projects. The Lagos Ibadan Expressway is a trans saharan route linking the southwest and northern parts of Nigeria. Movement of goods and services from particularly Lagos and generally the southwest to the north is solely done through this route and vice versa. In spite of this economic and social importance, however, work on the Lagos Ibadan Expressway, like many other projects in the zone, was abandoned for about three years due to lack of funding. Today, Reconstruction, rehabilitation, and expansion of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway is one of the major road projects resuscitated by the Buhari administration in the southwest zone. What the federal government are doing this road, I'm very, very happy because we have lost so many so on the old road. This work is also creates the employment for some people that they don't have hope that they can work for the government. Other projects in the southwest zone include rehabilitation, reconstruction and expansion of the Shagamu Ibadan dual carriageway linking Oyo and Ogun states, rehabilitation of the Ife Ondo Road in Oshun state, dualization of the Abekuta Ibadan Road in Ogun and Oyo states, and reconstruction of the outstanding sections of the Benin Ofusu or Ajibandele Shagamu Expressway. We cannot have the deficit of infrastructure that we have and refuse to commit our resources to it. So you are seeing increased dedication of the annual spending growing now from 15% to 30%. You are also seeing actual funding now, cash, going more to capital expenditure than you have seen in the past. Mohammed Hamza Sheikh, NTN News. I'm from Hamza. Let's join Chinyere in the Enugu Network Center for more news from that zone. Chinyere, it's over to you. Thank you, Femi, and welcome to Enugu. 100 women have emerged at the second raffle draw of Enugu State Traders Empowerment Scheme. Governor Ifanyu Gwani during the lunch at Enugu North Senatorial Zone reaffirmed his administration's commitment to open new pedestals that will provoke wealth curation and economic activities in the state. Ijoma Ogweke has details. The second raffle draw involves names of 25,358 traders drawn from the 37 markets spread across the three senatorial zones of the state. The empowerment scheme launched at the Gige Market in Suka drew eminent personalities from the state who participated at the selection of the 100 winners. 
Governor Ifa Nugwane, while presenting the check of 50,000 Naira to each of the winners, challenged them to reinvest the money into various business ventures that will improve the economic growth of the state. Some of the winners who were overwhelmed with joy described the scheme as remarkable. As you can see that he's doing, he's a very good man and intelligent, well good government and everything. So by this we know he's doing. The employment scheme, which is being rotated at the three senatorial zones of the state, is worth 60 million naira annually. In Enugu, Ijomu Veke, NT News. Some key players in the education sector in Enugu and students seeking admission into institutions of high learning are advocating the review of a new policy adopted by the Joint Admissions and Matriculation Board CHAM on examination and admission in the interest of students. Chiminyongoye reports. The Matriculation Board had introduced a new policy for registration of the examinations scheduled to hold on the 6th of May this year. Some of the students seeking admissions into universities bear their minds on this policy. So the way we registered last year, we used them, um, we went to the cyber cafe, purchased the form, and registered. But this year, cyber cafes are not allowed to register. So we are coming back to the jam office, and it's kind of stressful. It's, it's stressful, right? and it's now modernized. So I was expecting to be more easy, but now it's, it's quite difficult than what it is. I'm looking at the whole queue. I prefer last year. The Joint Admissions and Matriculations Board also introduced a new policy where students with amateur results from the West African Examinations Council examinations or National Examinations Council, NECO, may not be offered admissions into universities. Some key actors in the education sector also reacted to this. Uh, the West African Examination Council will do Christian their job to ensure that our children will not lose their admission. Because it's, it's, uh, for me, if they do, it's a waste of resources. Otherwise, JAM should extend their waiting resource period like it used to be in the past. On the issue of candidates of universities with surplus applicants who will be reassigned to various universities, some analysts believe that it will be beneficial to universities with lower number of candidates than their capacities in Enugu, Chinaeroye, NTA News. Government at all levels and employers of labor have been urged to ensure adequate protection and compensation for employees who sustain injuries in the course of their duties. Amaka Owo reports that some employees also advocate the need for conducive working environment for effective service delivery. Globally, workers in various occupations are faced with varying challenges and hazards that are sometimes inevitable in their places of work. These workers are often exposed to varying risks which over time could result in life-threatening ailments, disability, or death. For those uh, radiation workers, we have um, uh, protocols in place to protect us from um, x-rays, from the danger of x-rays. Being with the computer means that you have to sit down for a long time, which is not so good for health. And the waves you know, that comes out from the monitor is another thing that you have to face with us. It's not good, so good for the eyes. So Statistics also reveal that there is a high level of laxity on the part of various organizations, agencies, industries, government, and other employers of labor in providing safety and preventive measures for the well-being of their workers. Some respondents also advise workers exposed to occupational hazards to protect themselves while urging organizations and other employers of labor to ensure immediate treatment of injured workers and procure gadgets and facilities to help curb some of these occupational hazards. On the part of the labor unions, Mr. Chukwu Maibukwe say, Employee Compensation Act seeks to address issues on occupational hazards. He also urged workers to take advantage of these laws applicable to all employers and employees in our sectors of the country. In Enugu, Amaka Oro, NT News. And that's a bit from here. It's back to you, Femi. Good evening. Thank you, Chinyere. Fighting crime could be a big challenge. 
that the police in the federal capital territory says it will always rise to the challenge with an overpowering strength to outmatch criminals who dare the federal capital territory. The new commission of police, Musa Kimo, stated this while parading groups of criminals at the Garuki Command headquarters. Hadiza Godwin Abune reports that the new CP promises a touch, a tough time for criminals in the federal capital territory. There is a new sheriff in town. He's talking tough and walking the talk. On his maiden outing with the press, a mother suspect, car snatchers and other suspects were all on parade. CP Musa Kimo says the battle line has been drawn. Criminals have no hiding place in the FCT and environs. Because the police under my watch were poised. Certainly we are going to granulate, we will crush, we will suffocate, and we are soon about to declare them personal non grata. This suspect is accused of murder. He left the city after committing the crime. He declined comment. But other suspects on parade remorsefully confessed to their crimes. The reason I was here because we stole him by a motorcycle. They catch me with a car. Uh, we stole in car. So actually, we are the person that did it. I have been arrested before with some other people, but the case took me to prison. After I served some years in prison, I come out. They said me inside my house, me and my woman. Yes. I agree that I'm a courtist member, but inside criminal, I know they do criminals. When I'm east, now I do courtist. The FCT police command reassures law-abiding citizens of protection against people with criminal intentions, while tough times await criminals. In Abuja, Hadiza Godwin Ebuni, NTA News. You can watch this news live online via the NTA mobile app, which you can download your Android device at the Google Play Store or at the Apple Store if you use devices with iOS. And you are still watching NTA Nationwide. Please stay tuned. We have some messages for you. From what we have seen, we have the capacity which we can rapidly develop or feed in ourselves. If we don't import rice, we stop importing coal and other grains. In Nigeria, we have plenty of money to invest into developing industries, especially manufacturing, textiles and so on, and develop iron and steel, and complement the infrastructure development. So really, the opportunities are virtually limitless, and we are very, very aware of this and we are prepared to explore it to the fullest. This road was an apology. Not contented everybody. We have traffic pulled up here and there. We can spend an hour from here to the other side of the road. The rescue mission project came. Rescue the traffic, expand the road. At least the road is OK by me for now. So we have no traffic again. You drive as you like it. This is a rescue mission project. Invest in Emo. The Emo Rescue Mission. Emo must be better. Vote for me and I will turn night into day. Vote me, I will ban for more importation. Everybody will start eating turkey and chicken. Put me in power and I will bring winter to West Africa. I will turn all the taxi into play. Ah. Campaign Promises, another hilarious episode of <laughs> Professor John Boone, your rib cracking comedy. Find out the true gist of election violence, betrayals, and promises as Olani goes head to head with Udo. Who you mean?
showing at 8.30 p.m. every Tuesday and Friday on NTN Network International and Star Times. By the time I become the chairman, I will make you my special advisor. Uh -uh. Why are not going to make me money advisor? <laughs> what is wrong with you, my daughter? That is why people will look at politicians as thieves. Over and out. Brought to you by Glow. Welcome to the new speed. It's finally here. The most anticipated sports show on live television. Featuring great sports icons from ex-internationals to famed journalists and administrators. It doesn't come bigger than the sports parliament. Which premieres live on the NTN network this Thursday from 11 p.m. to 12 midnight. Be a part of the biggest sports talk show on television to help chart a successful path for Nigerian sports. 11 p.m. to midnight on Thursday on the NTA. Sports Parliament, where the eggheads converge. 100% Henshaw Productions specially invites you to the movie sometime in September. Directed by Iara Emanuel, DGN. Chairman, Mr. Donald Duke, former governor, Cross River State. Chief host, Henshaw Emanuel. Date, 2nd April 2017. World Autism Awareness Day. Venue, Silverbed Cinema, Abuja. Time, 5 p.m. Red Carpet, 6 p.m. Main Event. For inquiries, call Ayaba on 0803-592-7275 or Henshaw on 0018 one double three five seven coming up we visit david daniele in the 10 months since he appeared on airtel touching lives his center for citizens with disabilities has gone from strength to strength thank you Airtel. we are glad that you came and for emmanuel onyeka his dream of completing his studies has been dashed a tragic okada accident in 2015 had left him an amputee Yes, so no be only government go stop Lassa fever. Now everybody go put hands together to stop Lassa fever. We don't the years much more to this say Lassa fever don't use Taisai resource for some part of this country then. But the Federal Ministry of Health say make you no panic. Now to they clean our house all the time. We chase rats come out and if rats don't vamoot for a house, Lassa fever don't come out be that. Lassa fever get you symptoms. One at early stage where they bring fever, sore throats, vomiting, diarrhea, joint pain. The second stage now go on there. Now they cause bleeding from the nose, high C, spectrum. It go even the main blood to the come out from private parts. Even cause swelling genital. Break we stop to the shop. Anyway, we're at fifth and tower hours. Make it block on. Don't forget, say division of the universal health coverage. That to see, say everybody they can't be our car president. One may worry, want everybody make with stand in the bar. Yamayama no good for us, so it invites her. Sweat where they come up from person with get a fever. Feel transfer the disease from one person to another. If you suspect any fever, we don't treat it with better medicine and you know go quick. Or you suspect any person with get a fever. Make you roll go any health facilities where they near you. Last of them must go. Now, all of now, we'll give them red card. Now, Federal Minister of Health, bring on this message. We are still on 20 nationwide and Pam is waiting for our Makodi Network Center with latest stories in that zone. Take it away, Pam. Thank you, Femi, and welcome to Makodi. Prospective candidates into the Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination, UTME, for the 2017-2018 academic session are still finding it very difficult to carry out the registration exercise in Benue State. Tena Omai gives us an update on the exercise in Makudi. It was a hectic day for the prospective candidates who converged on the various bank premises to pay 5,500 Naira to obtain UTME registration PIN for onward processing. These banks are not in Zakibam, so have to transport from there to Makudi here. Since I paid my money, since last week Tuesday, I've not gotten my pin. You need to see how I was struggling to get my bank teller. They said my, this in my shirt I wore yesterday. It was the same scenario at the Jam Zonal office in Makodi, as candidates were struggling to gain access to the premises to continue the registration exercise. Zonal coordinator of Jam, Samuel Sale Umoro, attributed the situation to some unforeseen problems. Money will not register anybody because the internet is poor. And it's not just limited to business. It's all over Nigeria. Expectations are high that the jam officials will put in place a smooth machinery that will ensure that all prospective candidates are registered. In Makodi, Tena, Uma, NT News.
Medical experts have once more stressed the need for interdisciplinary and holistic approach towards tackling the menace of tuberculosis in Benue State. This is against the backdrop of the increasing rate of the disease in the state. Correspondent Blessing Omeche Ebute in this report highlights the Benue tuberculosis situation and efforts by relevant authorities to tackle it. Tuberculosis has been described as the most common life-threatening disease and the number one killer disease among people living with HIV. In Nigeria, various health authorities have continued to profile solutions to the increasing cases of tuberculosis. However, several factors still mitigate against curbing the disease, such as unhygienic environment, stigmatization, and poor health facilities, among others. Benue State, for instance, has a high tuberculosis burden, which medical experts attribute to high HIV prevalence. Think TB when somebody is coughing for two weeks or more. Think TB when you have a child that is failing to thrive and has a persistent fever of low grade and is not responding to anti -malarias. They say for Benue State to achieve 50% reduction in the TB prevalence rate, concerned authorities must provide technical support and awareness on the disease. Before, we were getting grounds with TB, especially when uh, the drugs for TB came out. Suddenly, they started coming down the incidence of TB. But with HIV, you know, exploding, we found that the incidence of TB started going up. The further urge government communities affected by tuberculosis and health workers to intensify efforts in line with the sustainable development goals to put an end to the disease. In Makudi, Blessing Omeche Ibuti, NTA News. And that will be it from Makudi. Femi, it's back to you for the rest of Nationwide. Good afternoon. Thank you, Pam. Owners of underdeveloped plots of land in parts of Karishi satellite of Abuja with infrastructure stand the risk of having their land allocation revoked by the Federal Capital Territory Administration. FCT Minister Mohammed Musa Bilu gave this warning when he visited Karishi on inspection tour. Mitari tells us more. The minister expressed dismay that despite the FCT administration's provision of multi-billion naira engineering infrastructure in Karshi town, land allottees have subjected their plots to racketeering and speculation. I want to use this medium to advise all those who have allocations in Karshi town center where the primary infrastructure has been completed to commence development or else we are going to revoke the plots and allocate to the teeming millions of Nigerians who want to develop. The minister also visited the site of the ongoing 19 billion Naira Karshi water project, stressing that the FCT administration will make it a priority this year towards addressing water shortage being experienced in the area. The project includes the construction of a dam, water treatment plant, and reticulation works in the area. In Abu Jami Tairi, Iqbal. NTA News. Port Accord is our next port of call and it's over to you, Jenny, for news from that zone. Thank you, Femi. Good evening and welcome. To achieve universal coverage on immunization, the River State Government has resuscitated the Task Force on Immunization with a mandate to capture every part of the state. Governor Wiki flagging off the first round of the Immunization Plus days in Port Harcourt says government is committed in ensuring that rural areas are effectively covered. Karina Igonikon completes the story. Governor Wiki, represented by his deputy, Dr. Ipalbo Banigo, said the Task Force on Immunization is part of effort to ensure the exercise is taken to all nooks and crannies of the state, including areas with difficult terrain. The governor emphasized the need for routine immunization for children and enjoined mothers to take advantage of the opportunity to ensure that their children are vaccinated. We must recover back all the missed opportunities. Those LGAs, LGAs that are reported missed opportunities because of difficulties in terrain, whether it be logistics, whatever may have stopped them, especially we are thinking of places like Bonu and Repobo. Uh, uh, and um, all those areas, 
every concerted effort must be put in place to bring them up to speed. Special advisor to the state governor on primary health care, Dr. George Opuda, commended the international partners and donor agencies for their contributions towards the eradication of polio in the country. Representatives of WHO, UNICEF, and Rotary International restated their commitment to remain supportive to the River State Government in its efforts towards the total eradication of polio in the state. In Port Harcourt, Karina Igoniko, NTA News. The Senate, the Senator representing River Southeast Senatorial District, Senator Magnus Abe, is appealing to the federal and state governments to initiate intervention programs towards engaging restive youths in Ugoni in productive activities to check proliferation of illegal arms in the area. Senator Abe, represented by his wife, Mrs. Lyra Abe, made the appeal during the distribution of relief materials to internally displaced persons in Ogoni. Kingsley Amajere report. Mrs. Abe's visit to the internally displaced persons in Bori, Kani, Okwale, Bian, among other communities, was at the instance of her husband, Senator Magnus Abe, to help bring relief to the displaced in Kana local government area. She was worried that the activities of the rival court groups is creating social problems in the affected communities, calling on the mothers to help talk to their children to drop their arms. I'd like to use this medium to call upon the state government, the federal government, to see how they can empower the youths. Because I know that if the youths are empowered, they will keep themselves busy and then they will drop their arms. And we also have to ensure that the message of peace is preached across Ogoni land. Ogoni land was never like this before. This is to be one of the most peaceful places in River State. But all of a sudden, we have cultists fighting themselves. Mrs. Abe, however, commended the Methodist and Deeper Life churches for accommodating the displaced persons in the affected communities in Bori, Kana local government area, Kingsley, Amajiri, NTA News. And that's our uh, contribution is back to you, Femi, in Abuja. Thank you, Jenny. Talatu is standing by now for Global Tidbits. Reports say that ongoing crisis in Ethiopia has led the government to extend a nationwide state of emergency imposed in October to curb an unprecedented wave of anti-government protests in four months, move condemned by the opposition and right groups. From South Africa, Opposition Economic Freedom Fighters leader Julius Malema calls for President Jacob Zuma's intervention.